Ever wondered what a brownstone is? Well, brownstone is a type of building material commonly used in the late 19th and 20th centuries for the construction of residential homes, particularly in the northeastern United States. In this video, I will discuss more about what is a brownstone, how is it used in a building trade, and why does it change color when exposed to the sun? The basics of brownstone. Let us start by talking about the fundamentals of brownstones. First off, brownstone is a soft brown sandstone material, which is also known as freestone because it can be cut in nearly every direction. Brownstone can be carved into ornate designs by skilled stone workers who produce fancy looking facades all over New York City brownstones. There are a multitude of users for this versatile material, so if you're not opposed to having a brownstone building, it is attractive. The chocolate brown color of the stone partially affected its rise in popularity during the 1800s. The rock contains hematite iron which tends to turn the stone brown when weathered. Before the 1800s, brownstones were much cheaper and considered less desirable than more expensive materials like limestone, marble, or granite. This all changed with the arrival of Romanticism, an intellectual and artistic movement that idolized natural settings when building a home. Brownstone does a perfect job of evoking that natural look, which is why people want it. Brownstone in the 1900s. During the 1900s in New York City, brownstone became extremely popular as a building material because of their natural look and reliability. In 1882, a federal building census was done which showed a massive 80% of New York stone buildings used brownstone to construct these properties. Mining improvements made brownstone even more affordable during the Industrial Revolution when steam-powered machines were introduced to replace human labor. By the mid 18th century, brownstone was one of the most desirable materials on the market and even today it still represents neighborhood appeal and urban sophistication. The quarries where brownstone was born before Brooklyn brownstone and South Wales brownstone rose in popularity and upscale city streets. It started in substantial open pits called quarries. When you stand in front of any New York City brownstone, the chance is good that you are looking at a Portland brownstone from Portland Quarry. It is an easy barge commute to New York City because the quarry is located along the Connecticut River. In the 1700s, brownstone quarry began in Portland, and many different constructions utilized the material for building purposes. Rows of houses, monuments, and churches were all built with the Connecticut River brownstone in New York. Apostle Island, Wisconsin. In Minnesota, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Detroit, and Chicago, many brownstone real estate used brownstone mined from the Apostle Island quarries. Located in Lake Superior east coast of Dulop, Minnesota. Lake Superior's made it inexpensive and easy to transport Apostle Island brownstone, which has helped further spread material popularity. Hummelstone, Pennsylvania. Another familiar source, brownstone, was a place near Pennsylvania's capital called Hummelstown Quarry. In the 17th century, Hummelstown brownstone was cut there and used in several prominent buildings along the east coast and upper west side of the Fort Greene, including the National Exchange Bank of Baltimore and North American Building in Philadelphia, and the Bureau of Engraving and Printing in Washington, D.C. New Jersey. Below New Jersey is the Passaic and Stocktown Formations, which are geological Jersey brownstone formations that extend over 200 miles across the state. The Passaic brownstone adorns the New Jersey Old First Presbyterian Church in Newark, and the Stocktown Formations were used for Princeton University's Nassau Hall, brownstone townhouses. The terms raw house, brownstone, and and townhouse are often used interchangeably, but there are considerable differences. Row house and townhouses are small buildings attached to other buildings or townhouses' structural walls. These brownstone buildings are often placed in a row, although there can be different configurations. In most cases, a townhouse or a row house is made from brick walls from brownstone quarries, but most importantly, the front needs to have a brownstone front brick wall. In New York City, it's most common to find brownstone only townhouses in areas like Manhattan's Upper West, West Virginia, and Brooklyn Heights East Coast, where it sells for 36% more than many buildings in the market. A true brownstone home has distinctive features like a spacious property of up to four or five stories and over 5,000 square feet of living space. Examples of this case include tall ceilings and carved fireplaces, some with exquisite detail and artistry. Many brownstones, other townhouses, and numerous government buildings have an area that leads up from the side 
sidewalk called the Parlor Floor or Parker Slope, which typically contains the dining room and living room. These days, many brownstones have been segmented into multiple units, giving more people a chance to try out brownstone living. However, savvy investors and real estate agents reclaim some multi-unit buildings looking at restoring brownstones and reselling the home. The enduring appeal of the brownstone. When the Portland Brownstone Quarry shut down in 2012, it shocked the public that something so iconic would be coming to an end. Many people can want to stay in the brownstone townhouse mainly because brownstone is less flammable than other real estate materials. Supply drives demand in this day and age, so no one is building new brownstones, and the remaining ones are over 100 years old. Maintaining a brownstone in New York City, some have been loving brownstones. Others have talked about the stone's potential to decompose. The stone is especially susceptible to pollution and climate changes because of the porous layered composition. If you perform regular maintenance, you can help with the upkeep, especially if you remove the ivy, inspect metal flashing to ensure that it's not absorbing moisture, keeping gutters clean, inspecting metal flashings and roofs often, and quickly repair any leaks, and applying caulk to open joints to keep water away from the party wall, such as door surrounds, horizontal structures, and windows. Before buying a brownstone homes, it's recommended to have a real estate engineer assess the property to see if it has any water penetration issues. Brownstone homes are more than just property made out of a particular type of stone. It's the way it looks and feels when you are around it. Actual brownstone owners know that it has something to do with the community and togetherness, which is why people around the country love these homes. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content. If you like this video, please check out this video as well.